Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some very, very good news when it comes to the PlayStation 5 on a now confirmation of a big, big concern a lot of folks had. Now, in case you guys are kind of curious in this one, there is the brand new PlayStation 5 Slim that did just go and come on out. And as of right this second, people are now finally getting it. They're having a chance to go and like, you know, literally turn on the console, setting up to their actual setup. And then also, you know, plugging on in, testing out the actual readable disk drive, which could be the big focus in this video. And overall, people are just, number one, one concerned about what these issues were because there's a lot of like you know preemptive issues in the PlayStation 5 Slim and as well now we're finding information out mainly because it's actually out so we can do the research and figure it out so we're gonna go talk about this that we actually had some pretty nice surprises that are thankfully somewhat helpful although still somewhat concerning in the future. So we're going to talk about that for the PlayStation 5 Slim this video. And as well, make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. we got that Twitter and Twitch room down below. We also have all the Howl links, which are a bunch of Best Buy. Fun little affiliate links down there below for the brand new um, Google smartwatches. A bunch of different options if you guys want to go check those on out. And a bunch of games too as well. We might have a few other little random Best Buy things all flicking around too as well. So keep that in mind throughout the next few weeks for the holidays. And let's go dive into the video itself. So if you guys have missed it, I'm sure you guys have heard about it, or if you guys are subscribers to my channel, probably have seen it. There is a brand new PlayStation 5 Slim that's come out. Now, it officially came out as of the 8th, and then as well, more so, I think the 10th. It was kind of that really big, like, slog where everything was coming out, and all the places have stock, and you can actually readily, easily go and buy it. And that's kind of a nice thing because, well, duh, we want to have it in our hands. We want to know how the consoles work. We want to know the small little details and everything else. And, of course, you know, take the little fancy photos. So we have a chance for folks to actually have a chance to highlight the console. Console, look at the console and even show things like the disk drive, which will probably be a big, big thing for this video. So there was a few concerns before it actually officially came out on the PlayStation 5 Slim is that the uh, optical disk drive, which is the thing we're showcasing up right over here, is that this was going to be a problem. This is going to be an issue, mainly for, let's say you had to go and get a brand new console. You don't launch your console for a few years. You don't have internet connection or maybe something way down the load, like road, like 15 years from now, or maybe like the PlayStation 5 servers are gonzo and you just can't even go connect and op, like basically utilize your disk drive. And that led to a lot of folks with issues because we had that same issue with the PS5 digital Xbox Series S where folks are worried about the future of their game. Any game you buy. Any game you buy, like, digitally, is it going to be gone forever? What about the disc drives, too, as well, and all games you buy on disc? Are you going to be able to be able to even play these games? Like, right now on my N64 Super Nintendo, I can still utilize those games if I have the proper TV and cords for it, and it's fine. Like, I just plug in the disc, and it's good to go. Same with things like a GameCube, etc. This is very easy to plug and play, and even this is, like, 20, 30 years down the road. And that's fun. <laughs> Sneezing, though not as much fun for that one. So basically for all this, it's kind of, like, interesting to go and see. Because we see that there's a potential problem, and we want to know how it's going to be fixed, how it's going to be addressed, and what's going to happen with it. And so far, it actually does seem like it's good, which is very nice to see. Uh, although this still leads to problem, proper issues in the future, where the PlayStation 5's detachable disk drive can now reportedly be swapped between machines easily, and as well, the new disk drive only requires a one-time hand online, basically like startup, to make sure it functions. Now, this is a little bit still skeptical, because, well, anything that I think you have to have like DRM, and always have to have it like connected to the internet, even if it's a one-time thing, does throw me off. There's been many times where I've had to like, re like factory reset things from issues, uh, my PC, console, etc over time over like a few years it usually happens and don't forget there's also like another 10 15 20 maybe 40 years depending on you know how much people care about these consoles that there could be potential issues running into in the future and if 30 years down the road which like by the way i just mentioned like a gamecube or n64 or super nintendo that is like sometimes over 30 years like it's a very very long time since these consoles came out uh guess what there might be an issue with this in the future but we're going we're gonna, to, instead of like having all these concerns, which I think are proper concerns, we're going to run this up to good. It does kind of seem like the issues that people are worried about is going to be like a every time, like basically every single time you swap it on in, people are going to be concerned that you basically had to have an online internet connection. So thankfully, it seems like it's just a one and done. We now have proper proof of this. People have actually utilized their consoles and have tested it out. Like people have had a chance to see, which I think is good. Like I think overall, we're going to round this video to good. Do I like the idea we need to have an online connection just to go and launch a disk drive? No, I think that's dumb. But at the same time, if you have to do it just one time, it's basically like a nice like little update. It gets automatically added to the console. And at the end of the day, it's not the biggest deal. I can live with it. You know, it could be worse. So either way, the new disk drive requires the one-time function to go rock on in. And we had a chance of here to go rock out Mystic, who actually had a chance to do the breakdown. I'm going to highlight the specific part for this, saying over here, 
And basically, if you're in a situation wherein they have two detachable disk drives and you want to swap them between the PS5 systems, that system can quickly register the new drive, quelling fears that drives also may be locked to one system, and as well, quelling the fears too that it's basically just a one-time use and you can swap them on out and it's easy peasy. So it's obnoxious. It's a weird design. I think a lot of us agree on that's like a little bit extra, but it's one of those extra things where you think about it for five seconds and you have the console, you launch it, you play in the game, and you're happy with that too as well. So basically, instead of the drive, seem now to more operate more closely to a peripheral such as a controller, interestingly enough. So if a player resets their PS5 with a detachable disk drive, the system will have to reconnect online again in order to register it. But once the drive has been registered once, it can be used offline again without issue. So this is good. Like, I'm going to round all this stuff up to good because it's a one-time thing, but I think a lot of us watch this video, like, don't want to be a stickler for something for one time. I have internet. I have internet to upload this YouTube video. You're seeing this. I've uploaded the internet to go and stream whatever, and I think a lot of us watching this on their phone, on their laptop, desktop, whatever you guys watch this on, we have internet. So it's fine. Like, I mean, I'm not sure many of us are out here, like, in the random rural farms of, like, you know, Arkansas trying to go and raise cattle. And I'm, I'm sure even a lot of farmers have access to, like, an online from satellite. Uh, a lot of places have, like, fiber lines, Wi-Fi, like, 5G, whatever. Like, it's still around. So I think for a one-time use... It's not a big deal, and it is nice that it has now been confirmed, both on the number one, like replaceable and swappable disk drives too as well, and number two, let's say you have to you buy a disk edition, you have to go buy a new disk drive for whatever reason, your kid spills water on it, milk on it, you put gum in it for whatever reason, a disk randomly somehow breaks inside of it, like things happen, like you gotta admit, there's millions of consoles, families, you drop it, whatever it might be, like things do happen to consoles, and the fact that you can just easily go and replace it, take it on out, and swap it on out, is I think a very good thing too as well, so, I'll just have a little highlight for this one if you guys have seen it. The whole swapping for the brand new Slim consoles are relatively easy. It's nice to see. It's like still a, a slight process, but it's not the world's worst. It's very easy to go have it like recepted online. You have a chance to go and click on it once. You start up the console, and it does end up working at the end of the day. So like it, it functions how we think it should function. The console actually works too as well. And once again, you just have to make sure you have it like reset properly all good. And once you do that, it should always be working on the console itself. Now, once again, I still think the PS5 Slim is a bit on the weirder side. And here's the actual update system itself we're talking about. You do have to update it that one initial time. But once again, like, you do it once. You play on, like, offline games, play single-player games in the future. It should be good. Now, I do have that slight, still, like, concern about this from earlier on. Or what if it's 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road? There is that small, like, inkling of chance that your console could have issues. And, like, it could maybe have issues for long-term game preservation, especially if you buy discs or even digital as well. But maybe that's one of those things that it's a small enough subsection. I care a little bit, but I don't lose sleep over it. But I do care. Like, I do want to bring it up and highlight it. I care about it at least a little bit. Because I do, once again, return to old games on occasion. But at the same time, if it works, you launch it one time. You're probably going to have it at least download at least one point in the future. Like, you're probably going to have internet. Almost all of us have internet. It's not the weirdest, false thing to have. And especially if you have enough money to buy a console, you probably have at least enough money to have internet for at least one month, you know. But either way, it's like so it's nice to confirm. So basically, say uh, sort of new players start up with their PS5 without internet connection. The disk drive, though, will actually refuse to accept the disks. And since no games can be downloaded without a connection, it will essentially be useless, though. And that is a really weird thing. But once again, I think most people have internet, but still, it's weird. So basically, new PS5s will occur in an internet connection for verification. There will be potentially come a time where the servers need to verify the license and no longer be operational. And once again, as of this second, it's not the worst, but long term, it is an issue. I'd still stand by. It is possible by the time this happens, Sony will release an update that removes the requirement, though, which is hopeful. And in any case, it's likely to be many years in the future, too, as well. So this would be like a PS8 type issue, too. But it still is annoying. And the online check is likely due to compliance with the DMC for the Blu-ray players to ensure official hardware, which also makes sense on legal issues for it. And the launch PS5 hardware can be set up without interconnection to as well, compared to the Xbox Series X, which cannot. So this model is actually coming out, as you guys probably know, as of right this second. And I want to hear all your thoughts, because I do want to say it is a little bit of a weird thing that you still cannot initially launch your console on an offline connection. But once again, I do think most people have it. I think most people have internet. I think most people watching this video will have internet. So it's not going to be the biggest issue nonetheless. I could see being issues long term. 
I could see being issues maybe if you tr like more of a single player person. There's, I think, maybe rare cases where you are around spots where internet's very limited. But even then, I think it's a very, very small issue in minute regardless. But it still stinks. It's still something to be aware of. We'll talk about it maybe later on. But right now, I think it's at least good news that the disc is swappable. It's a one-time usage. And I think most people can probably, throughout multiple years of the PS5, get at least used one time. So I want to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed if you guys are new. We have the Twitter and Twitch room down below. And we have all those different Howl links as well if you guys want to check those on out. We have all the different uh, actual smartwatches as well. Also the games. Hashtag ad. Hashtag Best Buy Partner. And I do appreciate you guys all so much for supporting the sponsors. You guys are all great. I love you guys.